Hey you guys, it's Denise, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about epiglottis. And so the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention today is because my newborn is in the PQ and he was admitted about 26 or 27 days ago. He's still there, he's on a breathing tube. And on the first day I got this called a laryngoscopy, laryngoscopy, this is what it showed. I got this laryngoscopy from the ENT that performed his ET tube, which is a breathing tube that you put down the throat. Either I wasn't paying attention because I was so busy looking at my kid, or I just don't remember him talking about what this was exactly. Finally, on the 25th day, after being in the PQ, which is the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit, so it's like a four to five hour round trip every single day I'm driving there and I'm asking questions and finally we had a meeting and they told me that he had a redundant epiglottis and so this is the epiglottis but I don't know if this is upside down or not this would make me think that it's not upside down because this is how the picture is representing to me but this is how it looks if it was upside down so they're saying that he has a redundant epiglottis this photo i got on the first day when my baby was first taken there my baby had to be airlifted because at my local hospital they failed eight attempts to intubate him so they said that he has a difficult airway and that he has a redundant epiglottis but they haven't really elaborated on that all they keep telling me is that he will need a trach and i feel like there should be something else that he can do or that somebody can do in order for my baby not to receive a trach i've heard that babies usually can grow out of them between 18 and 24 months so basically it's the flap inside the throat that protects the airway from um, aspiration and food and drinks going down the wrong pipe. So you have two pipes, one is for food and drinks and one is for breathing. So the epiglottis I believe sits on top of one of those and can move up and down. And when you eat and you swallow something, I guess it goes down so that way it protects the food from going into the wrong windpipe, which would be like the larynx I think. I ask questions every single day and at first I didn't know exactly what questions to ask because I didn't get any information. So basically I took him to the pediatric to get his two month shots. And when I took him to the pediatric, I also was telling her that he was having like a rattling sound and when he was breathing after feeding. And this was always since he was born. He was born at 36 weeks, so he's a preterm baby. And the first five weeks, it was kind of like slow feeding and we would um, be giving him the bottle but um, he would be taking like two hours just to feed off of that and so it was slow weight gain and then sometimes a, like reflux so then we would wait like another two hours to feed him I didn't really realize that if he um, like spit up that I should probably feed him again so you know so that way he wouldn't lose the nutrients I didn't know anything of, like that and since my pediatrician was on vacation I just kept doing whatever I could do me and my husband to just feed him but we would always be up all night because we would be feeding him like every two to three hours sometimes he would spit up through his nose occasionally through the mouth but not a lot just a little bit and we would hear like this rattling sound so we took him to the pediatrician finally the pediatrician said that that was normal premature babies have that sound but if you wanted to make sure just go ahead and take him to the ER. So we took him to the ER and that was like an eight hour wait or a 10 hour wait inside of the ER. They wanted to transfer him to a children's hospital so that way they could get a better look at him and the hospital that's two hours away that's the bed that became available. So their ambulance came to pick up my baby so that way we could just transfer him there and then get looked at and possibly help him for the rattling sound. Well, when me and my husband left, um, they called me maybe like 20 minutes later and said, get back here so fast, um, just get here safely and stuff. Little did I know my baby had uh, stopped breathing. I guess he did work of breathing or something like where he was breathing really fast in and out. He was already having breath holding spells. We would always bring him back too. Like a breath holding spell is when the baby holds their breath or clamps down and then they turn like a dusky color. Um, basically they're holding their breath and then you just 
blow in their face and you know pat them and stuff to get them to come back so i'm guessing that that's what happened when we left but they started uh giving him air and then he they told me that his lung collapsed or his airway collapsed and so they tried to intubate him Um, eight times were failed attempts there and so they put the LMA mask on him and then that's how he's at this hospital now. They were at 30% of O2. I'm just going to give you a heads up. We're, gonna, we're waiting for the helicopter to get out the valley before we head out. So he's at this hospital and every single day we're asking questions. They're not feeding him or they're feeding him and then stopping feeds because he has to fast so that way they can do all the tests. All the genetic tests came back great. The lungs came back that he didn't have pneumonia, that they were um, functioning well. Everything's coming back great, great, great. Um, genetics is coming back great. GI is coming back great. No respiratory issues. All Everything is just the throat and basically all they're telling me is just difficult airway. We did extubate him one time. Um, a week later, but he failed extubation, I think after maybe almost a day. I wasn't there when he failed. Um, I guess he. they said that he started the work of breathing or breathing really hard, so they had to intubate him again. And this time, they called me and let me know like they're, they're going to intubate him. So when we got there, he looked paralyzed. So that's why he needs to be very well sedated because... This is a, it's, it's a, it's a semi-secure airway. They paralyzed the baby before they decide to intubate. They had to intubate him in the OR. They did that, they were successful. This time it didn't take a long time. The first time it took them like an hour and a half. They always say that it took them so long because he had a difficult airway. Meanwhile, this whole time, all these days are going by. He's on the breathing tube. Um, they keep on saying that they want to trade. Almost every day I hear trade, 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 or every week I hear trade, trade, trade. Finally, we had a um, family meeting. Trade, trade. I said, like, what's going on? Finally, they told me on day 25 that he has a redundant epiglottis and difficult airway. And I'm like, what is that? They didn't give me anything to go off of. They didn't draw anything. Like, I'm just a regular person. I have no medical background, so I don't know what they're talking about. I'm trying to picture it. And they say you have three options. You can extubate him, see if he can breathe great on his own. If he can, you can go home after a while. Second one is we can get a referral to a different hospital, but he's intubated, so... That means we would have to transfer him by a helicopter or ambulance. The ambulance I called, that's $1,200. And the third is trach. But I'm thinking that there's two other options. Supra or Supra, some, I feel like they keep pushing trach, trach, trach. Maybe just reduce it a little bit. And I don't know if my baby's is an omega shape because they said that it's shaped, it's redundant. So I'm guessing that's thick or fat or, and that it, the way that his anatomy is, this is why they had a hard time going down the airway. What exactly is the difficult airway? Never can really get an answer, so that's why I'm here talking to you guys on YouTube. If you have any um, answers for me or any type of advice or suggestions, please comment below. I know because time is running out. My baby's been on the breathing tube for 27 days now. And I really do want to get a second opinion, but it's hard to get a second opinion when you are tubed down in the hospital because I can't just pick them up and go take them different places to get an opinion and all the children's hospitals are far out there's like a Los Angeles one there's the Orange County one there's the Loma Linda one so they're all like spaced out and I do not live near any of them so I have to make the right decision and I want to give my baby the best quality of life and I want to you know let him know that I tried hard but I just don't think that the hospital that I'm at can do it maybe and that's why they just keep saying trach. A trach is just going to mask the problem. It's not going to actually fix the problem because they're saying that he has a difficult airway and that his epiglottis is redundant. So that's not fixing the problem at all. That's just masking it. Later I'd have to try to see if I could get the trach removed and then can you know fix that. It usually fixes itself you know within 18 to 24 months but because he's already tubed we need to do something now so if you know what this shape is i'm guessing it's the omega shape maybe let me know and comment below I'll turn it up.
so and or email me please so that way I can get some answers meanwhile I'll be um, looking to see what I can do for my kid thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you later in my next video Bye.